story begins in 1917, when hobble skirts and bobbed hair were the rage. Football's secret weapon was the new forward pass, and everybody was dancing the waltz. Well, that is almost everybody, for it was the beginning of the jazz era. There were a few, though, who refused to heed the unmistakable signs of the time. Especially was this true of our friends Steve and Mary Byrne. They operated Walsland Ballroom, where three-quarter time still ruled unchallenged. Thank you very much. I have a very great artist I'd like to present to you right now, my son Donald. Lucky we picked a good day for the picnic. Yeah. I suppose many of our friends will be enlisting. Oh, uh, uh, John, did you remember to bring the beer? Oh, the beer. beer. Oh, sure. And the ice to keep it cold. It's in the car. Oh, wait a minute, and I'll give you a hand. Stephen! I want to ask you a question. And you, John. What have you two been doing that you're trying to hide? My band and I have enlisted. We'll leave for camp tomorrow. But why so soon? Those are my orders, Mary. I don't know how we'll ever manage without you, John. <laughs> We've already engaged another orchestra to take John's place. Sure, and with your daughter Louise to help you, you won't have any trouble with the ballroom. Oh, we won't need Louise to help, will we, Steve? Oh, Mary. Mary, I... I've enlisted, too. In fact, I report the same time John does. Both of you going. How are the fish biting, Donald? Those fish are biting. They're biting each other. <laughs> Tonight's our last night, so let's make the most of it. A little waltz, boys. Everybody dance.
I'm afraid you're too young to understand, Donald. But try to be brave, just like your father was. Will you promise me that? I promise. And when I grow up, can I lead the orchestra, just like my father used to? Yes, Donald. But why can't I start now? You have to start growing up first. You'll be going to Texas, Donald, to live with your Aunt Martha. That was your father's wish. With the end of the war, ragtime and jazz were the rage. It seemed nobody was waltzing anymore. But Mama Byrne loyally carried on Waltzland, a memorial to the kind of music that has been her life. I sure wish your grandmother would change her mind about selling Walt's land. I'm afraid she won't, Bill. Besides, I think it's better that she comes east with me. I'll be able to watch out for her that way. Are you still going to take that job singing with a band? Mm-hmm. Well, now, if I don't, how is the public ever going to find out about your songs? But please don't tell Grandma. Hello, Mama. Looking for us? My granddaughter's been here for two weeks. And I've seen her for exactly two hours. I'm sorry, Grandma, but it's such a beautiful day for fishing. Oh, it is, eh? And what has he fished out of you so far? <laughs> come on in and have lunch with your old grandmother. Then you can come out again and fish some more. See you later, Bill. I got him. Oops, I get a gap hook. <laughs> Young man, I don't appreciate your sense of humor. Well, now, Colonel, I just want to let the fish know that you're still alive up here. Well, I'd suggest you find some better way to satisfy your charitable impulses. I'll be gone, prankster. I'd like to continue my reverie here. Okay, but I thought maybe you'd like to join me in a hamburger on the house. Well, now, son, I ain't never been a fellow to hold a grudge. I'd be mighty proud to break bread with you all. Audience. Say, how's the songwriting coming, son? Just fine, hey, sir. Hey, hey, toast that bun and, and put plenty of butter on it. Been writing any new ones lately? Yeah, I've got hey, one. Take a piece of that cheese and slip it in there to disguise the taste of them onions, will you? Looks like you sure fell for that pretty young granddaughter, Mama Burns, didn't you? Oh, she's okay. Say, here's another thing, boy. Take a piece of that lettuce and put on there with plenty, plenty of that relish there, will you, son? Right smart looking filly at that age. Coffee? Yes, with extra cream, son, extra cream. That disguises the taste of the coffee there. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't she? Fair, considering she comes from an old cow. Now, look here, Colonel, just what do you just mean? Just a moment. The implication is that I'm not used to just ordinary hamburger. Sirloin for my loins every time. I'm sorry, Colonel. I was referring to Ginny, Mama Burns' granddaughter. Young lady going to visit long here? Oh, she's going back east. Gonna take Mama Byrne back with her. Mama Byrne wouldn't leave here. She will when she sells Waltzland. I'm gonna miss her. Mama Byrne's helped most everybody on this pier, including me. One time I had a run in with the law. Nothing serious, mind you. As soon as the law realized who I was, everything was all right. And who were you? Young man, like most folks around here, you laboring under a misapprehension because I choose to fish all day. You like to call me a lazy loafer, but I want you to know this and remember it. I was a big man in Kentucky before I retired. Hi there, everyone. This is George Sanders again with some of your favorite records. In fact, here's one that I've been getting a lot of requests for. It's Spade Cooley's great recording of a tune titled, Wake Up Susan. But first, here's a bit of mighty interesting news concerning our fiddling friend. Yes, the king of Western Swing has signed a contract to star in a motion picture. That's right, he's going to star in a motion picture. And uh, according to the latest reports, he's mighty busy soaking up some of our special brand of California sunshine before making the picture, of course. But now, enough of this chitter-chatter. Let's make with the music. So take a listen to Spade Cooley, the king of Western Swing, as he plays Wake Up Susan.
What a band. If Mama Fern could hire that outfit, she wouldn't have to sell waltz land. Well, now, son, if that's all she needs, why don't you hire this paid cool? Just like that, huh? What would we pay him with? Hamburgers? Well, if money's all she needs, son, you are looking at the main entrance to Fort Knox. <laughs> What's so funny? This young hamburger chap, he just insulted me. And for that, sir, I refuse to be your guest. Oh, I'm sorry, Colonel. I accept your apology. But the idea of you owning a gold mine <laughs> struck me as funny. No, I didn't say I owned a gold mine. I simply said this, that if Mama Byrne wants to keep Walsh Land going, I'd be willing to invest money in the project. Now, is that so fantastic? Well, it is a little hard to believe. I mean, you... Clothes don't make the man, my dear. It's what's in them, among other things. And there's more where that come from. What did you do, rob a bank? Now, for that, son, you ought to be horsewhipped, and I know just the horse that can do it. Come on, now, let's get this project to going. But, Colonel, I don't think Grandma will go for this. For one thing, she'll probably object to the idea of Spade Cooley's band. Why? He's got a wonderful education. I know, but one of the reasons Waltz Land has died on the vine is Mama's notion that modern music is no good. And that's one reason I don't dare tell her I'm going east to sing with a band. Well, now, honey, we just won't mention Spade Cooley till after we've engaged him. Hmm? You mean, if we engage him? Now, you just leave that to me. When Colonel Ed Harrison sets out to do something, he does it. Good morning, sir. Good. No casting today. Casting? You fish in here? Must have an artificial lake. <laughs> I'll have to try it sometime. Uh, who do you want to see? Spade Cooley, Spade Cooley. Have you got a pass? Well. No, sir, I ain't got no pass, but yeah, I, I yeah. guess I'll just have to buy a ticket. Hmm? Nobody gets in here without a pass unless they have authorized business. Authorized business. That's right. right. Well. Hi, fellas. Hi, Spade. Hi, Spade. Virginia, you know Roddy McDowell? Yeah. Sure. Right. Russ Hayden. Hello, How do you do? Jimmy Ellison. Hi, Hi Jimmy. Miss McPherson's from United Press. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Roddy, I caught your disc show, and it's certainly fine. Thanks for plugging my records. Oh, it's a pleasure, Spade. Are you a disc jockey, too? Yes, and I have a lot of fun doing it, too. I'll we'll have to listen to you sometime. Oh, I wish you would. I'm on every day, KMPC. And hey, what are you two made up for? Why, well, Spade, we're doing a series of westerns right here. Yeah, called the Four Star Series. And good, too. I caught one of your previews. And for your information, it's Shamrock Ellison and Lucky Hayden. Shamrock Ellison and Lucky Hayden? I knew these two back in Texas, but we didn't call them Shamrock and Lucky. I can guarantee that. <laughs> I miss the George's manager. Oh, okay. I miss the George's agent. You're right. Mr. George's publicity yes, man. Yes, sir. I'm Mr. George, huh? You're Mr. George. Well, sure I am. If you're Mr. George, where's all your hair? Well, I used to wear it a little fuller, but I... Good morning, us. Mr. George. So this is the picture business. Yep.
Good morning, my dear. Thanks for the lift, Miss Jurgens. I'm in charge of all baggage here. Miss Jurgens, me. Say, Spade. There's one thing you've got to watch out for in this town, and that's phonies. Yes, the town's full of them. They even come out of the walls. Oh, I don't think they're any worse here than they are anyplace else. <laughs> well, maybe not, but here they come more expensive. You boys are liable to scare Spade right out of town. I scare pretty easy, too. <laughs> well, thanks for the story, Spade. I have to go now. I I'll see you to your car, Virginia. Okay. Why don't we both see you to the car? Okay. Bye. Well, thanks a lot, Virginia. Bye, boys. Bye, Bye Spade. Spade. Like I was saying, Spade, watch out for those phonies. you, Spade. I ain't seen you since Texas. You remember that night on the panhandle? Well, why don't you sit down? Well, thank you, Spade. I got news for you, mister. I'm not Spade Cooley. You're not? I gun if you look enough like him to be his brother. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. What do you think, Spade? Sp I'm gonna have to get over this habit of going around out my glasses on. Say, now, I represent the finest ballroom on the Pacific Coast, Mr. Cooley. You are Mr. Cooley, ain't you? That's right. Well, I'm here to engage you and your orchestra to play in my ballroom. We open up next Saturday. Well, Colonel, you may open next Saturday night, but not with my band. I'm here to make a picture, and that's all. Oh. That's all, huh? Maybe a couple of television shows. Television? Well, now, in that case, I'm prepared to hire you for a television show. What show and what station? Uh, station. You gotta have a station, huh? It's customary. You'll hear from me, son. You'll hear from me. That character's a phony if I ever saw one. That phony's a character if I ever saw one. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Harrison? Howdy. Won't you sit down? Now, Mr. Landon, I'm gonna be brief. If you have a television station, I have an orchestra. You don't look like a musician. Well, now, what I really meant to say is I represent an orchestra, Spade Cooley. Now, how'd you like to have him on your television station? You can deliver Spade Cooley? From Walsland, finest ballroom on the West Coast. Don't know that I ever heard of Walsland. Well, now, that, that's understandable, because we ain't been doing much advertising lately, but we opening up big next week, changing the name from Walsland to Santa Monica Ballroom, opening right up with Spade Cooley and a big show. Sounds interesting. Who's your sponsor? Sponsor? Why, oh, yes, your advertiser, to pay for the airtime, the show, and so forth. Does somebody have to pay for that? Well, of course. <clears throat> there you'll hear from me, sir. Good day, sir. Well, do you realize what I'm offering you? Spade Cooley, the king of Western Swing. A great big show. Why, you draw the biggest television audience ever possible. And you'll display one of our new models right on the floor. Models? Well, don't you think it'd be better if you displayed one of your automobiles? Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Yes, sir. We'll put it right smack in the middle of the floor. I'll have the contract drawn immediately. Well, now, uh, here, have a cigar. Finest Havana. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Just like I told you, I got a sponsor. Well, Colonel, you certainly move fast. <laughs> I'll have the contracts drawn up immediately. Well, thank you. Goodbye, sir. Hi, Spade. Hi, sons. Hi. Hi. Take ten, boys. What are you going to sing, Ken? I thought we'd do Room Full of Roses. We haven't done it for quite a while. You couldn't have picked a better tune. Sure. Well, Mr. Cooley, I'm ready to talk business now. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have time to talk to you now, Colonel. I'm rehearsing. Yeah, but I got everything all set. I've got the sons of the pioneers here. I'm trying to listen to them, please. I'm awfully sorry, I don't have time. Darling, if I send a rose to you for a 
every time you made me blue You'd have a room full of roses And if I sent a rose of wine For every time I've cried all night of the pioneers. Well, now, that pioneer family certainly raised some talented sons. Hey, we could use them in our television show. Our television show? Yes, sir. Once a week from the ballroom, Saturdays, 8.30 to 9.30. Now, wait a minute, Colonel. I told you I was only interested in my picture. Well, you said you'd do a television show. Well, just guest appearances. No ballrooms. I'm awfully sorry, Colonel, but I must get on with my rehearsal now. Uh, sure. Sure, Mr. Cooley. Goodbye. I don't think we can do anything with that other numbers paid. The arrangement isn't ready. Well, in that case, we might as well break for the day. I think I'll take a ride out to Santa Monica Pier and visit an old, old friend. See you later, son. Okay. Well, Colonel, you tried your best. We'll just have to get another orchestra. But I can't help feeling he would have been our good luck charm. I think it's a shame. Imagine a television show from here. Does Mama Byrne know we've been trying to get Cooley? We haven't even mentioned getting an orchestra tour. She shooed me out of the office an hour ago because she was expecting a visit from an old friend. Donald Martin. You're the spitting image of your father. Not Donald Martin anymore, Mama. Donald Cooley. Better known to the trade as Spade Cooley. It's so wonderful to see you. But why haven't you been to see me more often? In my business, Mama, you don't stop in one place long enough to say hello. Come on, Donald. I want you to meet my granddaughter. You've never seen her. Ginny, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. This is Donald Martin. I mean, Donald Cooley. Donald, this is my granddaughter. Donald Cooley? You mean Spade Cooley, don't you? And this is Bill Morgan. Howdy, Bill. How do you do? You again? Do you know Colonel Harrison? Wait a minute, Colonel. Is Walsh Land the ballroom you've been trying to hire my band for? Well, yes, but I didn't know Mama Byrne, that is, I... Well, why didn't you say so? I didn't get a chance. Well, this throws a completely different light on the whole picture. Of course, we'll play for Mama Byrne. Sure enough. You will? Why, certainly. My gunnies, I better get downtown and sign those contracts. Just a minute. I'll have to use your pen. Them contracts is made out in your name. <laughs> Let's get on with our summary, sir. You understand that we're to paint the entire building here. Repair everything that needs repair. Now tear out all that stuff in there and build me a stage back in there. Plumb up against the wall, you understand? Cover up them posts somehow or another. Hang a draft behind there to cover up a nice place there for the band to sit. You understand? Is that all clear? Right. My estimate stands. All right, then you better get on with it. Now, uh, Colonel, how about a deposit on the work? Oh, the work's going to be satisfactory, I'm sure. You need not give me a deposit. Well, no, I meant for you to give me a deposit. Uh, the company usually insists on a partial payment, sort of a bond, uh, before the work starts. <clears throat> well, I could pay for the entire job right now, but I prefer not to. Now, do you want this job or don't you? Oh, yes, of course, but... Uh, Have a uh, cigar. Uh, Finest Havana. Oh, thank you, Colonel. 
Hmm, that is a good cigar. Nothing but the best. Now, I want you to remember the time element is very important. We open here next Saturday, and Spade Cooley's television show is going to be broadcast right from here opening night. So you'd better get going. Mm -hmm. Well, I had love and baby, and on her I show sure was so. That gal, she done me dirty, left me standing in the cold, and I shook. I've been shaking all day, and I'll be mighty happy when I don't feel this way. I came home to my baby, found my little house she sold. She done gone home to mama. Howdy, Bill. How's it going, Spade? The song's beginning to shape up fine. Say, that song gave me so dandy. You've got a lot of talent as a songwriter, Bill. Oh, that one was easy. All I had to do was think of Ginny, and the song practically wrote itself. I'm sure glad you like it, though. I like it so well, I'm going to feature it in the show. Gee, if it's that good, maybe somebody will publish it. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Hi, Ginny. Hi. Well, hi. What are you made up for? Well, Spade asked me to take part in the show, and this is a costume for one of the numbers. What's going to be, a western number? Now, how did you ever guess? <laughs> Say, Jenny, I'm sorry I had to change numbers on you, but this will fit the show better. Oh, all right. Well, what's the name of the song? You've got me wrapped around your finger. Really? See, we're almost converting Mama Byrne to our kind of music. I'm surprised anybody needs to be converted. But Deep Freezer Dine ought to do it. Tex, that ought to be just a ticket. Mama, you're going to love this one. Ready, boys? Now, way down south in Caroline, where the sun was scorching porcupine and a cooling breeze was never known to blow. There lived a gal, believe it or not, who's twice as cold as the weather was hot. Her boiling point was four degrees below. The Romeos all passed her by, for her heart was cold as the banker's eye. To be left alone was quite okay with her. Now, a few of the boys from round about had tried for years to thaw out, but no more luck than a crocodile has fur. They call her Deep Freeze Dinah from sunny Carolina. She's the coldest gal in town. She's kept her girlish figure, she really looks nice. But anything is bound to keep it, keep it on ice. She once caused much confusion by giving a transfusion for the patient nearly froze to death. She took a trip to Borneo, she started quite a fuss. The cannibal shot a take her back, no frozen food for us. Deep freeze diner from sunny Carolina, she's the coldest gal in town. They call her Deep Freeze Diner from sunny Carolina, she's the coldest gal in town. 
when she's out on party, she's easy to please. My she'll drink anything you've got, including antifreeze. One guy double-crossed her by trying to defrost her, for he nearly burnt the building down. She gets a lot of fan mail from the land of ice and snow. Why, she's become the pinup gal for lonesome Eskimos. Ah, oh, deep freeze diner from sunny Carolina. She's the coldest gal, real frigid gal, the coldest gal in town. Come on, fellas. Come on, kid. Stick close together. You know what I mean? Wait a minute, Steve, I want to talk to you. Stay together, Ed. Come up here, will you? Just a minute. I watched you out there, fella. Not bad. Real good. Swell. Fine. You know, what's your name? Never mind. Who's your manager? Here's my card, huh? See what I mean? If anything happens, I can use you. Who's the manager here? Who hires all the acts? Oh, swell. Why do you waste my time? Mr. Cooley. Come here, fellas. Kids. Come here. All right. Mr. Cooley. Your problems are solved right now. I have three of the greatest stars you have ever seen or heard. These guys are out of this world. Three sensational talents. Stars of tomorrow. Look, I got I, a, Oh, I, wait a minute. Give me a break, will you? I got great stars in the making for you. And let me tell you, you're getting cheap, too. This first gent, this handsome gent, oh, he sings. Beautiful ballad voice, pear-shaped tones, you know. He sings ballads like, uh, I'm walking down memory lane with nothing on my mind. Terrific, ain't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't it terrific? Yeah. Swell, thanks a lot. Very nice, kid. It's real swell. I'll get personal. Next. Man. This kid, this kid does tricks. Real great magician. He, he's like uh, Cardini, Udini, only better. Let me show you. He does tricks like pick a card, see? Not you. Pick a card. Uh huh. Now, don't let me see it. Now, tear it in half. Mm -hmm. Tear it in quarters. Mm -hmm. Tear it in eighth. Mm -hmm. Tear it in sixteenths. Now, take a number from one to sixteen. You okay. Got it? Swell. Um, add 42 to that number. Okay. Swell. Now, divide three into that. Right. You got it? Swell. Now, is your answer four? No. You know? No. Uh-huh. Take another card. Uh, get out of here. I've got a record. Wait, wait a minute, Mr. I've Cooley. You've got to be real now. Give me a break. You listen this far? Will you give me a break? One more guy. This guy is out of this room. What happened to me? He used to do it. I don't know what happened to him. He's drinking. This fella is a dramatic actor. You know, one of those really highly dramatic actors? He, spe he specializes in... Uh... Well, he came with me. He um, specializes in love scenes. You know, real romantic scenes. Things like... Oh, darling, don't move. I want to see you as you are. Don't move, darling, so I could remember you as you've been. Don't, you moved! <laughs> Sting. Well, swell. Next. No good, now, huh? now, wait, wait, now, wait. I've got a rehearsal to do. You mean... Uh, I'm sorry. No. Nothing happened? Not the time. Nothing happened. Not well, the look, time. Mr. Crowley, will you do this? If anything does turn up, will you call me here? Here, main 2356. The phone's in the pool room, but they'll call me, you know. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'll do that. Swell. Talent. Come on. So this is the new show business. Well, if you want me to finish that dress, you better come and let me measure the hem. I'll see you later. Bill, take over. I want to catch this act from out front. Sorry, but I told you yesterday, Mrs. Whatever Your Name Is, that we couldn't use your type talent. But, Mr. Cooley, I'm going to give you just one more chance to hire me. We've got all the singers we need. But, Mr. Mr. Cooley... Mr. Cooley's awfully... Let's <laughs> you and I just walk in. Colonel Harrison! Yes, sir? What is it? I must have a word with you, Colonel. Well, you had your word. Now, good day, sir. I've tried to find you all week. You've been dodging. Uh, well, that is, you've been elsewhere. I must ask you for a check, Colonel. Well, uh, I told you I'd pay you when the job was finished. Now, my word is my bond. Uh, the job's been finished for two days. Oh, well, it has, huh? Well, why wasn't I notified? I'm a man that likes to pay my bills on time. Now, you see me tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Sunday. Tomorrow's... Oh, it is. Hey, well, then, see me Monday. Uh, Colonel, 
Unless I have my money right here and now, I'll see that you don't open tonight. Don't open tonight, eh? Well, uh, how much is the bill? $3,480.62. Uh, well, uh, I don't think I've got that cash on me just now. Yeah, well, I'll take a check. Check, huh? A check? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, I don't reckon I brought my checkbook with yes, me. Yes, well, I've got a counter check right here. Yeah. Oh, yes. Counter check is that legal? Uh, just fill it in. Of course it is. It is legally. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, no fountain pen. Oh, well, so here, I've, I've got one. Oh, you have. It's one of them pens that writes under pressure, huh? That's right. There's no ink in it. No, no I'm sorry. No, 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 here, Colonel. I'm sure this one is all right. There. You're well prepared, ain't you, sir? That's right. Thank you, Colonel Harrison. Thank you very much, and good luck to you. You just happened to write in the wrong bank, eh? Well, it just happens that I'm going to get out a warrant for your arrest, you phony. Well, now, now, my dear sir, ain't no use of you taking that kind of drastic action. I'd be very happy and willing to write you a new check on the right bank. Well, you don't give me any more of your checks. I want my money in cash, and I want it now. Well, very well, sir. You shall have your money in cash. Hey, but wait now. This here is Saturday, and the banks will be closed, so I reckon you'll just have to wait until Monday, huh? Give you a chance to skip town? <laughs> Nothing doing. I'm coming over there right now, and I want my money, or you don't open tonight. Oh. You mean to say you gave him a bum check? He had me cornered, son. Demanded payment, or else. But what about that big bankroll you had? Did you spend it? Son, as much as I regret it, you just can't spend Confederate money anymore. Why, it is Confederate. That's right. I tried to bluff it through. It meant so much to Mama Byrne and everybody. You don't know how much it meant. Gone. if only that check hadn't bounced until Monday. But it did bounce, and we are in trouble. Say, maybe Spade Cooley could lend us some money, huh? No, we don't want him to know anything about this. It'll be bad enough if we can't pay his men. And we definitely must keep it from Mama Byrne. It would break her heart. Boy, that sure is a beauty. The only way I could ever get a car like this would be win it in a raffle. Say that again, son. Say what again? Never mind. Boy, our troubles are over. What are you talking about? We got to raise money enough to cover my check without touching admission receipts, right? Right. All right, so we hold a raffle. What do we raffle? Your bum check? Of course not. This automobile right there. But we don't own it. It's just here for display. Mere trifle, son, a mere trifle. We can sell enough tickets to cover the price of this car in addition to covering my check. I don't know, Colonel. Somebody could make trouble for us. Listen, son, if this don't work, the only one will ever make me any trouble will be the warden. Come on, son. <laughs> fancy outfit you got for the boys. Well, sir, Colonel Harrison spells class. Nothing but the best, I say. Nothing but the best. Must have set you back plenty, too. Mere trifle, my boy, a mere trifle. Oh, by the way, we're having a raffle right in the middle of the TV show tonight. What's being raffled? An automobile. You know, Colonel, I've got to hand it to you. You know, I owe you an apology, I believe. Why, an apology? Why, sir? Well, for a while, I thought you were strictly a phony. Uh, well. Can you imagine that? Yeah, well, let's just imagine it. <laughs> I'm going to get them front doors open. 
I'm the contractor for all this work around here. This is the deputy sheriff. Oh, well, just a moment, you. Oh, me? Yes, you. Well, this is the deputy sheriff. I'm sorry, we don't need any. Well, I've got a restraining order here. Restraining order? You can't open these doors tonight until this claim has been satisfied. Oh? And deputy sheriff Noons is here to enforce that order. Well, now, how do you expect me to pay you if you ain't going to let me open? Well, that's your problem. Either you pay up or you stay closed up. Just like that, huh? Well, Mr. Smith, you win. Come on with me to the office and I'll take care of you. Very well. Now, this here is my private office. I like it private because I've got plenty of money in that safe in there, you see. Hey, I won't just step right in. Well, now, Mr. Murray, what a surprise. Imagine seeing you here. Surprise? I want the money for my costume. Some money for co You mean to say I didn't send you a check? Now, you know darn well you didn't. Well, that was a pure oversight, Mr. Murray, pure oversight. I'll have your money for you first thing in the morning. All right, then I'll take the costumes now. When you bring the money, you can have them. Not a but, Mr. Murray. No but. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Murray. You look like a reasonable sort of a man. Here, have a cigar. That's pure finest of that. I'll tell you what you do. You just go on and amuse yourself around the premises here. In one hour, I guarantee I'll have your money for you. Ever send it? All right, I'll wait. But only on one condition. Yeah? You know, my wife is crazy to get on the television. She is? Now, she hounds me all day long. If you could put her on the show tonight, we could make a deal. It's a deal. Where is she? Outside the door. I was afraid of that. Bring her in. Come on in, darling. How do you do, ma'am? Will I be on first? Well, no, I can't rightly say that. Now, just let me see. What kind of act do you do? <laughs> Is that what you want to do on this show? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, just come with me. <laughs> We're right next to the stage. Folks might be rehearsing. Raffling off the car. Tickets. Here we go. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Here we go. Help yourself. Thank you. I've got the money. Now you got the tickets. Tickets on the new automobile. Here's your ticket take. Tickets on. One for each of my clients. Three. three. That's, that's three, three for you. Thank you. That'll be yep. three dollars. All right, boys, let's get it up. Let's get it up, huh? Man's not giving them away. It's not Santa Claus, you know, because of the thing here. One, two, three. Thank you. I hope you win. I that's hope right. everybody wins. All right, Tom, on the new on. automobile. Hey, now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our first television show. Right now, we'd like to bring a grand act to you, the Taylors. Let's bring them out with a big hand.
Crowding. I've just learned you're conducting a raffle here tonight. We sure are. Want to buy a ticket? I certainly do not. Well, and what's more, I'm going to pull this television show off the air this moment. Why? 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 Don't you know it's against all regulations to conduct any sort of lottery on television? Well, no. Where's I... the nearest phone? Uh, uh, Mr. I'm going to call the station and have this show taken off the air immediately. Mr. Landon, you can't do you. Well, okay. Right this way. Follow me. <laughs> You'll have to be a little quiet. I got an opera singer rehearsing there in my office. Nice and easy. Colonel Harrison! Are you in it? Get out of here! Get out of here! I want my money! Hey, Harrison! Right now, we'd like to introduce a new personality, a new voice, and the lovely lady who has them, Miss Jenny Johnson. Bring her out with a big hand. Jenny, come on out, honey. Welcome to our show, Jenny. Thank you, Spade. It's a pleasure to be here. I suppose you're going to sing Foolish Tears. Well, that depends on you. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Tears, oh foolish tears, stop falling. You know you can't bring him back to me. Foolish tears, why do you keep recalling the days in the happy used to be? Never could believe I really loved him. He knows I wasn't true to him before. Foolish tears, why go on thinking of him? You know we're not wanted anymore. Foolish tears. 
She has hidden talent. Somebody should organize a searching party to look for it. <laughs> I wish she'd lay it and get it over with. I tell you, this is what the public wants. They don't deserve it. She could do an awful lot for television. She certainly could. Set it back 50 years. Oh, want to take a chance on a new car? Oh, oh, hello there. Just whose car do you think you're raffling off? Shh, show's going on now. Yours, yours. Uh, that is ours, ours, ours. I demand that you stop the stick of sale at once. Uh, now, now, look, look. If you give me just another hour, I'll have plenty of money in so I can buy the car. Nothing doing. You either pay for it now or else. Or else, huh? Whew. Well, I got some money in the office safe. Now, if you just follow me, sir, will you? Hey, pay no mind to that. That's one of Mr. Cooley's artists vocalizing in there. chamber. <laughs> what is that? That, sir, is my wife. Your wife? Yes. And what are you, man or a rooster? <laughs> and right now, a boy of very unusual talent, somebody that you all know, I'm sure, the one and only Chewy Rays. Chewy Rays. Right now, we'd like to introduce a brand new song entitled Oblivious. This number was written especially for our little lady of song, Jenny Johnson, by the boy she's going to marry, Bill Morgan. Bill doesn't know it yet, but he's going to sing it for you. I'm 
oblivious to the wind and the rain and the snow, unaffected by the flowers that bloom in May. I'm ignorant of the things that people think of me, absolutely unconcerned with what they say. I'm unconscious of all the traffic, the subways, the noise, but indifferent to all as I appear to be. How quickly I'd become enthusiastic. Were you oblivious to everything but me? I'm insensible to the news and the views of the world, unexcited by the Dodgers and who they play. Impossible is the word, says my psychiatrist, and he says I'll surely drive him mad one day. When I walk right into a lamppost, I bow and I smile, but as scatterbrained as I must appear to be. You'd see how quickly I'd return to normal. Were you oblivious to everything but me? to introduce to you a group of boys that are known from coast to coast as the aristocrats of the range, my very best friends, the sons of the pioneers, and there they are. I saw the light And I got the word I knew Sister Lou is going to be there, brother, like me and you. And old Kit Carson, he will too, way up in the sky. He going to ride. Ride as a cowboy, ride, can't be. Ride, ride as a cowboy, ride, can't be. Ride as a cowboy, can't be. Ride on the golden range up in the sky. 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 Yes, we'll ride as a cowboy. Slew that John so tall proved right was might for big and small. Play his harp as I recall way up in the sky. He gonna play his cowboy, can't be play his cowboy, can't be play his cowboy, can't be play on the golden harp up in the sky. Up in the sky, up in the sky, up in the sky. Up in the sky. Yes, we'll play Hallelujah, his cowboy, brother, can't yes, be way up in the sky. Up in the sky. It's time for the big drawing. Colonel Harrison, will you take over? Well, I thank you, Steve. And thank you, folks. Well, now, let's see. This is a big moment. Now, Mama Byrne, will you draw a ticket from the barrel? Now, will you tell me what is the number on that ticket? 
The number is 4266. Does anybody here have number 4266? Sing out. Hey, we got it. Come on, will you? Come on, challenge. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Let me see here, son. You're exactly right. Four, two, six, six. Congratulations. Thanks sir. a lot. Thanks a lot. Only he's got the number. He's so happy. He's numb. <laughs> and here are the keys to your dream car. Thank you. Are you happy? <laughs> are you happy? Yeah? You happy? Come on, Lucky. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do we do, boy? Great. Looks like we took in enough money to buy the car and pay all the bills. Well, thank goodness. I sure hated to think of going to jail. You know, I've got a phobia. I can't stand being locked up. Locked up. Holy smoke. I hope they ain't all suffocated in there. No, Colonel. I used to think you were nothing but an ordinary faker. <clears throat> well, ma'am, we all make mistakes. <laughs> yes, you're no ordinary faker, Colonel. You're a genius. <laughs> well, son, wait a minute there. What you got there? Well, sir, as an agent, I get 10% of anything my client gets. <laughs>